Welcome again. It's Friday. It's dress down Friday. And we just want to thank God for being with us all through the week. I hope that this has been worth your while. And that we have learned something and that the Lord is helping us. Um, what happened to Peter? What happened to Peter is what's happening to many of us in our professional careers, in our businesses, in our dealings in the marketplace. And that's why I thought he, would, he was such a powerful study, a powerful person to study if we're looking at ourselves as apostles in the marketplace. Because he's the quintessential businessman and an apostle as well. Let's pray. Father, we are here today again. Speak to us, lead us, guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the book of John, chapter 14, we find the promise of the Holy Spirit. From verse 16, it says, And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. But it's um, because it's, it does not see him, neither does it know him. But you know him, for he dwells in you, and he shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. After Jesus restored Peter, he needed the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do that which God, Jesus was asking him to do, feed my lambs. And earlier on, when Jesus was telling them about his death and resurrection, before he was crucified, he had told them that even with the heartbreak of losing Jesus, with the heartbreak of him going away and them looking like they were being left abandoned, he told them, I'll not leave you comfortless. I will send a comforter. And this is where I want us to end the week, with our eyes fixed on the comforter, on our paracletos, on our helper, on our counselor, on our friend. And that's where I want us to just have a little focus over the next 10 minutes or so. Let us see what, what the word of God says. So Peter has been restored, like we, st we saw yesterday. Three times he denied Jesus. Three times he was restored. We realize that once Peter was restored, after he had denied Jesus three times, that he was restored to a place of right standing with Christ, that he joined the other uh, disciples to go to the upper room and await for the promise, the promise that was to come to them, that Jesus had told them, I will not leave you without a comforter. I will send the Holy Spirit. The world will not see it, but you guys will know he is there because he will dwell in you. And we see this as the beginning of the restoration, and not just the restoration, but the manifestation of this declaration that he was given by Jesus, feed my lambs. If we go to the book of Acts, we meet Peter at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And it tells us that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came the sound from heaven, a rushing, mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And we know how this story goes. That arrival of the Holy Spirit marked a turning around in the life of Peter. And I want us to jump over to verse 13. No, verse 12. They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what means this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But, verse 14, my hero, Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and he said to them, Ye men of Judea, and all you that dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you, and hearken unto my words. And he goes on to tell them that this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is a man who denied Jesus when he was accused by a small servant girl. He could not defend the gospel in front of a small servant girl. He could not stand by his friend. Forget even about defending the gospel. He couldn't stand by his friend in the face of almost zero threat. But here he stands up and by the enablement of the Holy Spirit is able to break down an ancient prophecy in a manner that left everybody waiting for more. Verse 37, when they had heard this, they were pricked in their heart 
And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38 of Acts chapter 2, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Eh, look at the turnaround. Look at the difference restoration makes. I'm part of, of the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. I sit on their board and assist with their legal issues. And there's one thing that has always been a complication when we are having discussions. The government wants us to regulate ourselves. And one of the things that we can use to see whether people are righteous or upright or not is by requiring them to give a um, certificate of good conduct, the one that you get from the, from the police, from the DCI. But shock on us, when many of the pastors were quite resistant to that idea, and so we held a meeting to discover, I mean, what is wrong, brethren? Getting a certificate of good conduct for a pastor should be easy, shouldn't be a problem, and it will help us weed out undesirable elements from our midst. That's when they said, no, some of us have a criminal record. <laughs> We were brought from somewhere. We did not get saved out of nowhere. Some of you, we know you were born again as children. So you don't, you've never done anything nasty. But some of us have done time in prison. Some of us have done nasty things. If you ask me for a certificate of good conduct, my brother, you may not like it. You may not like what you see. Some of the people who are making that assertion have very powerful ministries now. The turnaround. They are 180. What God did to them is something that he is now using for his glory. He took them from where they had fallen and made them trophies of grace. Yesterday we prayed together with those of us who may be in a backslidden state. You were an apostle in the marketplace and you lost your way and your faith ran away slowly from you like sand through the hourglass. And we ask the Lord to fill you again. And we ask the Lord to fill us again because we are all leaking. But guess what? For you to have the, the type of impact that will propel you from here to where God is calling you, you need the power of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Look at what Peter said. Very, it's, it's very interesting. He told them, verse 38, repent. That's what we did yesterday. And be baptized. Every one of you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we do with the baptism of John. For the remission of sins. But the other thing he says is once you do this, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I cannot overemphasize the need for the infilling of the Holy Spirit in enabling us to do what God has called us to do. This Peter, who could not defend himself when he was asked whether he was a follower of Jesus, delivered a sermon, and that day, that very day, 5,000 people gave their souls to Christ. In fact, those were 5,000 men, meaning there must have been women and children who had the same testimony and were also born again. Jesus, in all his deity, in all his glory, in all his godness, only managed to leave 70 disciples. In the upper room, I think there were 120. Peter, in one sermon, 5,000 people came to the saving knowledge of Christ. Do you see what a difference the infilling and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost can do? Maybe you are just a so so businessman, you know? You do a little contract here and there, you do a little construction, but you've got a small company. God is able to turn you around that you win a tender and you do this affordable housing for the government and build yourself 2,000 units, exponential potential. If you look in the scripture in verse 41, it says, they gladly received his word and were baptized and in the same day, 3,000 were added. One sermon, 5,000 people give their lives to Christ. Another someone, 3,000 give their lives to Christ. I've grown up in a home where people, we go for crusades. We used to go for crusades a lot with my dad 
when we were younger. And even when he preached his heart out, I never saw 3,000 people come into the saving knowledge of Christ. Extraordinary results. It's because we are ordinary people who have an extraordinary God. My challenge to us as we wind up this week is that affirm your calling in the marketplace. Affirm your workplace as a place of destiny. Make your election and calling sure by building competence. Develop and maintain the character to sustain what God has given you. If you sleep and fall, have the humility to come back and ask God to renew a right standing within you. If you're completely backslidden, do not be afraid. There is grace enough because though your sins be red as scarlet, they can be made white as snow. But when all of us are back on a sure footing, walking in our area of destiny, open yourself up to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That by you being filled, you will have the wings to fly faster, higher than you ever could in your own strength. The Holy Spirit is our secret superpower. He's our ingredient, chemical X. Remember the one that made the Powerpuff Girls? Yes, the Holy Spirit is our secret ingredient, X, that makes us Powerpuff. But if you truly allow the Holy Spirit to work in you, through you, and to fill you up, greater things than these you will do. And remember the word of the Lord tells us, the standard according to, Christ, uh, to God is exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ever ask or think and imagine. That means there's nothing you can dream of that can even prepare you for what God wants to do through you in the marketplace. So I challenge you today, allow the Holy Spirit to be in the steering wheel of what you're doing. Hebrews 11, let me finish with this. The heroes of faith. Every day we talk about, we are the ones who are writing the book of Acts to this day. But there is one thing that I want you to be counted is to be counted amongst the heroes of faith. Why? Because you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, but if you do not have the faith to dare to believe and to do that which God is asking you to do, then you'll remain very, very full, but at the same level. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report, and without it, it is impossible to please God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and build the faith to dare God to do great things through you. So don't just seek the filling of the Holy Spirit. Don't just open yourself up to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We need to not only continue writing the book of Acts, we need to also continue Hebrews 11 and to add to the heroes of faith. I hope you're encouraged. I hope you've been built up and I hope that you have been challenged to do something different in how you approach your work, in how you approach your ministry at your place of planting. It's been an honor and a privilege to be with you this week and I want to thank you for the opportunity of welcoming me into your space. I pray that God will continue teaching us even as we run faster and higher in him to the glory and honor of his name. Lord, we thank you for all you have done, for all you're doing, and for all that you're going to do. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.